Hey guys, it's me, Crystal from Marching North, and today I'm going to show you how to make some cute framed macrame wall art. I picked up these two little pieces of wall art over at the Dollar Tree. I actually got these last year, so I'm not even sure if they're selling them anymore, but they probably have something similar. And there's little square wall arts. Um, this one, well, they're both about six and a half inches on the outside of the frames and about five and a half inches in the inner part of the frame. So you can use different sizes for these. It just needs to be something similar and you'll just need to cut your dowel to fit whatever size you use. You'll also need some macrame cord. I'm using three millimeter single strand macrame cord here. Then you'll also need a wooden dowel. I'm using a 5 8 inch dowel and this is 12 inches long, which is long enough for both of my wall hangings if I cut it. So you'll just want to measure how far across it is on the inside of your frame and cut your dowel to fit. So the picture in my um, frames is just attached to the backing board. So I'm going to add some cardstock to cover that up. So first to do that, I'm just opening it up. It's really easy to open these. You just pry the little tabs open and you see it's just attached to the backing board. So to cover that up, I'm just gonna grab a couple of pieces of cardstock and you can use whatever color cardstock you want. I'm just going with a regular old white. It's kind of an off-white, but, and I'm using two pieces to cover it because with one piece, it shows through. So just cut those down to fit your backing board. And then all you have to do is pop them in the frame and stick the backing board right back in. Now, if yours has glass, I would probably take the glass off and just leave it out. Um, mine didn't have glass, so I didn't have to worry about that. And here you go. Now you have a nice blank canvas. And here I have the pink one. I just did the same thing for both. And now I'm measuring how big the dowel needs to be and I'm cutting it with this giant pair of scissors. I recommend you use like a hacksaw or hedge clippers or something, but that works too. For the first wall hanging I'm making, I'm using 10 pieces of three millimeter single strand cord and they're 22 inches long each. And I'm just gonna take each piece and attach it to the little dowel using a lark's head knot. And then once you get them all attached, you can just use some scotch tape to tape your dowel down to your work surface so it's easier to work. And now we're going to tie some square knots. So starting on the far left, I'm taking those four cords, taking the left one and bringing it across the center as an L shape, bringing the right one back behind and through. And then you're just going to tighten it up. And that's the first half of your square knot. And then you bring the right cord across in the reverse L shape and bring the left cord across that behind the two center cords and through the loop on the right. And then pull them again to tighten it up. We're just going to repeat that all the way across. So you'll have five square knots all together for your first row. For the next row, you're going to skip the first two cords on the left and then tie a square knot using the next four cords. And then you'll repeat that across so you'll have four square knots all together and you'll skip the first two cords and the last two cords. For the next row, you're skipping the first four chords, tying three square knots, and then skipping the last four chords. For 
For the second to last row here, you're going to tie two square knots and you'll be skipping the first six chords and the last six chords. And then for the last row, you're just going to tie one square knot right in the middle. All right, now we just have to decide where we're going to cut our fringe. So I just took my frame and stuck it over the top and marked about where I wanted the fringe to be cut with some scotch tape. And then I just held my uh, wall hanging up while I cut the fringe. Using the tape as a guideline really helps cut it a lot straighter. And here's how it looks so far. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of hot glue across the back of my wall hanging. Just make sure you're doing it on whatever side you want the back to be. And be very careful you don't burn yourself. Hot glue is not my friend usually, but sometimes you got to use it. And then you just got to figure out where you want it to be in the frame. And I just stuck mine right there. And there you go. One down. Now we just got to make the other one. For the second wall hanging, I made a semicircle and I used seven pieces at 30 inches long and five pieces at 20 inches long. And I'm attaching one of the 30 inch pieces here with a lark's head knot. And I'm going to do the same thing with one other 30 inch piece. Then go ahead and tape your work down and you're going to take the left cord and use it as a filler cord to tie three double half hitch knots going to the right. And if you aren't sure how to tie a double half hitch knot, I have a video that shows exactly how it's done nice and slow. So I'll link to that up above and in the description as well. But just go ahead and tie your three double half hitch knots. And then we're going to attach our cord to the dowel over here. So you bring your cord in front of and above the dowel and I'm going to untape it so I can get behind it. And then you're going to bring the end down behind and then pull it through that loop you just made and tighten it up over next to the knots. And then you're going to bring it up behind the dowel and bring it down in front of it and down through the loop again. And this just makes a lark's head knot with one end of the cord. So just tighten it up and your first row is done. Now we're going to attach another 30 inch long piece of cord on the right with a lark's head knot and scoot it over. And then you're going to use, we're going to retape your dowel back down. And then you're going to use that rightmost cord as your filler cord. And you're just going to tie double half hitch knots going to the left. And in this case, I'm going to tie four. And then once I get to the fourth one, there will be a big space you'll see um, where we need to add another cord. Okay, so here is our big space right there. So I'm going to take one of the 20 inch cords and I'm going to attach it to the filler cord with a cow hitch knot, which is just a reverse lark's head knot, just done the other way so that it looks like this. Then just slide it up next to the other uh, double half hitch knot so it blends in. And finish your last double half hitch knot of this row. And pull it up tight so everything just looks like it's seamless and it all was just double half hitch knots. Then you're going to take this end of the cord and bring it up in front of the dowel. You'll probably have to move your tape over on the left so you can get to the back of your dowel. Bring the end down through the loop. And then you're going to bring it up behind the dowel. And bring it down through the loop again. And this is what you're going to do at the end of every row. And then just go ahead and attach your next 30 inch piece of cord over on the left. Tape your dowel back in place and you're going to repeat. So just do the same thing, tying double half hitch knots across to the right until you reach a space. 
and then you're going to add another 20 inch long cord. And you'll add one cord for each row. So it depends on just where you get to the space. Like I'm about to get to the space right here. So I'm going to add my extra cord. And then I'm just going to continue on across my row and attach my end of my cord to the dowel like I did for the other rows and repeat until I have six rows all together. So each row that you start with this, you're going to start with a 30 inch cord and then all the cords that you put to fill in the gaps will be the 20 inch cords. Also, if you want to make this a little bit longer, I made mine pretty short. My friend was like an inch and a half, two inches long by the time I was done. If you want to make it a little bit longer, you'll want to make your cords longer to start. If you wanted to make the fringe longer, you could probably add maybe like five or six inches to all your cords to just so that they're long enough. There will be a little bit of excess cut off of some of them because some are just gonna be shorter than others. So it's really up to you. All right, so here's how it looks. Now I got my six rows finished and I'm gonna cut the fringe to pretty much line up with the shortest pieces. That way I'm not wasting too much and just eyeball it. Just, I cut around and eyeballed it. You can measure it if you want, but I was just kind of doing it quick. And then I went ahead and brushed out the fringe and this is optional, you can do this if you want. Then I realized I needed to brush the fringe downward if I wanted it to fit in the frame. So I was doing that here and then just check to see how it fits. And if you're happy with it, it's time to glue it in place. So I'm just adding my hot glue to the back. Just be careful that you don't put too much so it doesn't show through in the front and figure out where you want it to be and line it up nice and straight. And it is complete. I think these turned out so cute and I think they totally look like something you would buy at a store like Anthropology or even Target or somewhere. And it's a great way to use up some scrap cord and you can just find the frames at the dollar store. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching!